Are you ready to branch out, to take a leap of faith, to love yourself and others fully? Then let go of whatever no longer serves you to take action now on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up and letting it go. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. With Erica's E3 approach, equipping, empowering, and enlightening yourself so you can be yourself for yourself. Get ready and get rooted to live a life without regrets, without what ifs, without should haves, and especially without empty feelings from a life unexplored. This hit show helps you build powerful and intentional roots to live it up, love it up, and let it go. Get fearlessly ready and powerfully rooted in your yes with your host, Erica Gifford Mills, and be fearless about your more and stand in your yes. Now on Get Rooted Radio. I am Erica Gifford Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go, right here on Transformation Talk Radio. A big shout out, as always, to my producer today, Jessica. Jessica, how are you doing? I'm awesome and very happy to be here, as always. Well, and we're happy to have you here because you have a good episode today. It's titled Unlocking Your Potential. And during today's episode, you will learn how to unlock the unyielding potential within you by prioritizing your emotional health and confidence through transformative practice of EFT tapping. My guest, Andrea Hunt, and I will discuss the benefits of EFT tapping, starting with managing stress, worries, and fears, laying the foundation for conquering negative self-talk and dismantling the imposter syndrome, which we can all use a little bit more of, not not use a little bit more of imposter syndrome, but dismantling (laughs) it. Um, This episode will truly empower you to overcome internal barriers, paving the way for unparalleled personal growth and success. But first, a little bit about my guest. Andrea Hunt is an American world traveling transformational coach and EFT practitioner and the founder of Living Deliberately Today, personal empowerment coaching for a better life. She's a published co-author of the book, Overcoming Self-Sabotage, 11 Stories of How to Get Rid of Destructive Habits, which you definitely got to read it. I'm, a, I'm going to be ordering my copy, so it's, it sounds like a great book, so I'm, I'm so glad to uh, promote that as well. Um, she helps people rebuild after difficult life changes and step out of their comfort zones without stress, without self-doubt, and overwhelm so they can master the art of living deliberately. Using the clarity and power of coaching and the power of emotional freedom technique, EFT, she helps clear negative emotional blocks to confidence, self-worth, and self-love that can hold us back and cause self-sabotage. Andrea offers private and group sessions online, in-person, and online workshops, and is also co-working trip leader for Digital Nomads, which I can't wait to hear more about. So welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're, like I said, we're talking about the emotional freedom techniques or better known as EFT or EFT tapping. So I want to just jump right in and tell us about your journey, what EFT tapping is and how did you find it? So EFT tapping is one of my favorite subjects to talk about. So I love this question, but um, basically it stands for the emotional freedom technique, as you mentioned, and it uses, you use your fingertips to tap on acupuncture points on the face or other parts of the body. And it sends a signal to the amygdala that stops the body's fight, flight, freeze response. So this is really great in the area of emotional health. You know, if you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, you know, there's lots of situations where we might feel uncertain and worried. And then also it does help with confidence blocks, which I want to talk about later because that's one of my favorite ways to use it with clients. And it's funny because I actually found EFT um, in kind of a funny way. I'd heard about it and I just, I didn't really get it. I like, I just thought I'm like, how can tapping on your face help anything? Like that just looks kind of funny. I don't get it. Um, and so I was doing my master's program here in Germany and it was finals week. I was a bit of an older student. I went back to get my master's. So I was like 30 four or 36, I can't remember, but everybody else was younger than me and still had study habits. And for me, going back to school was so challenging to study for tests again, because I had been in the working world where you do projects, you do, you know, different kinds of um, activities, but not cramming for tests. (laughs) And so I was completely overwhelmed. 
Um, I was so stressed and anxious, like I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I was a complete mess. And the exams were not going anywhere. You know, I still had to take three that, that week. And I got to a point where I was just a mess and like I couldn't meditate. I could, you know, I would try exercising and my brain just would not turn off. And so I found a video by Brad Yates. It was called EFT for Fear and Panic Right Now. And I was like, that's the one I'm going to try. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? At this point, I am so desperate. I will try anything. And so I sat down. And, um, you know, you measure yourself from zero to 10. I was like a 12. <laughs> I was like super, super panicked, super afraid, super scared, worried, everything. And 10 minutes later, when I checked myself, I was like, God, I, I feel a little bit better. Like, okay, this I'm onto something here. And so I did it again. So after about three rounds, I had gone from like a level 12 down to maybe like a three. And I was like, this was just really incredible. I have to learn more about this and I have to be able to use it in many other things. So that's how I found it originally. And then, of course, I've used it, you know, over the years for pretty much everything from job loss to breakups to, yeah, just being stressed in general. Well, and, and I think that's important to, to note that I don't want to say you found it by accident, but you found it by accident. And that's mm -hmm. how sometimes you need to have tools in your toolbox. And mm -hmm. we, we don't get better if we don't try new things. Mm -hmm. So when I think that's one, one, as you said, this is weird. Why, how does, you know, tapping here or the acupuncture <laughs> points, how, how does that, how does that even work? So I think people need to be open to trying new things when their old things aren't working because mm -hmm. we sometimes get used to doing the same things, doing the same meditation. And then it's not working because one, either we're not doing it consistently or two, we're, we're not doing it right, right? Because that, that can always happen. Um, we're not doing it fully. We're not committed or in the back of our minds, we assume it's not going to work mm -hmm. because nothing is going to work. And so I think what what made you then want to stick with it besides the fact that it worked, right? That, that you couldn't believe that, wow, this worked right off the bat. What are the long-term benefits of continuing to do it on a regular basis? Sure. Well, there's generally like several ways that you can use it. And like one of the favorite ways that I have is in the morning as part of your routine to ground you and set you up for the day. Because a lot of times, I mean, I found with myself that when I would not ground myself in the morning, I would just kind of go bumbling through the day, you know, and different things would happen, you know, and I would just react impulsively to them. And I would, you know, get frustrated, or overwhelmed, and I didn't have any tools to kind of go into the day in a centered and calm way. So that's one of the best ways. Also, of course, in the evening, you know, if you're somebody whose brain won't turn off when you're trying to go to bed, yeah, mm -hmm, that's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the other thing that it's really important to to use it for is, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week, I mean, life has so many unexpected things that we cannot control around us, but we can control, you know, trying to get ourselves in a, in a grounded place where we recalibrate, you know, so like, um, you know, simple example, let's say that we're having a totally good day, we think everything's fine. And like, we just get some email from our boss or from a colleague or our partner or kids say something and we suddenly get really, you know, angry or frustrated or worried. It's important to be able to tap that down so that you can recalibrate and not let it destroy the rest of your day. Because otherwise, otherwise those things kind of compound over the course of the week. You're like, oh, Monday, this happened, Tuesday, this happened, you know, and by the time you get to Friday, you're already like, you know, an emotional mess because you're carrying around all of the weight and emotions of the week. So that's one of my, I think, the the two critical points. And then, of course, for managing um, things that have to do with confidence, like fears that we have, you know, a lot of people, for example, have stories from when they were a kid. This is the example that I always get. If you get up in front of the class when you're eight years old to show your painting or, you know, um, give a talk or something like that and a presentation and everybody laughs at you, you suddenly learn it's not safe to be seen. It's not safe to be heard people are going to criticize me or I'm going to be rejected. And that is something that you might carry with you into your later life. And so when you, your brain sees a situation that could provoke that same feeling, you know, you freeze up or you fight or flight, yeah. you know? So, and, and that is so important because we do, we, we flight, we fight or we fight, freeze. Fight, yep. And, um, and it, you know, th those are good things to have 
right? That they're there for a purpose, right? To, to protect us. But sometimes we use them also as an avoidance. And so mm -hmm. ma making sure that we understand that difference. Like if you're in a, you know, terrifying situation, someone's coming up behind you, it's good that you're fleeing, right? That you are, or that you need to fight, right? But when we do this on a day-to-day -day basis, that gets, that gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about emotional health and how this can all be tied in with EFT tapping and, and why our emotional health is so important. But before we go, um, Andrea, tell folks how they can reach you. So at my website at www.dreahunt.com, D-R-E-A-H-U-N-T.com. Yeah. And also I'm all, I've got social media. I've got TikTok. I've got YouTube. I've got um, Twitter and Facebook and, of course, Instagram. They can follow me there as well. Perfect. You are listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any portion of today's episode, you can catch it on GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Don't forget to subscribe online to receive the latest news, events, specials, and words of encouragement. Go to GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Andrea Hunt. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. So during the last segment, we learned about what EFT tapping was, and now we're going to talk about emotional health and why that is so important to our success and how EFT can um, help get us there. So let's just jump right in. Andrea, why is emotional health important to our success? So it's important for a couple of reasons, um, mainly because like it's very important to have emotional resilience, you know, over the course of the day and just in general to be able to bounce back from things. And also in terms of get, constantly being able to ground yourself when necessary, because if you think of an example, like let's say that you're, you know, <laughs> if you're grounded and centered and in a good mood and you're walking down the street let's say somebody accidentally spills something on you or whatever you'd probably be like ah okay no it's fine like i know that you didn't mean it on purpose like whatever it'll be fine but let's say that you're overwhelmed you're super stressed out let's say you slept badly because you know you're so anxious and stressed that you're tired maybe you haven't eaten or maybe you've been emotionally eating and you're just not in a good place and so that same situation is going to provoke an immediate response that's probably not going to be very healthy, right? You're probably going to, you know, yell at some stranger in the street or blame them or whatever. And then maybe you're going to go through the rest of your day just derailed and all of these series of other things sometimes end up happening. You know, it's like when you catch your uh, sweater on the doorknob, you know, and they're like, why does it only happen when I'm in a bad mood? <laughs> you know? And so then you kind of go through your day and it's just, you're at the mercy of the universe for how you feel because you don't have a way to, you know, recalibrate and ground yourself. And so, of course, those are like very small examples, but it's just in general, you know, things are so unpredictable and life is overwhelming. And as I said, like, we can't always control things, but we can try to ground ourselves in a way that we're making rational decisions, rational choices in the way that we show up for ourselves and for other people in our lives. I'm, I'm thinking this would be great for folks to to learn and know especially during this holiday season um in road rage out there right i mean i, oh, I felt <laughs> i mean i fell victim to it just the other day i thought i was in a fine mood and but i was i, I had to go out someplace i didn't really want to go out i live close to a mall and i avoid that area at all costs during the holidays because it's people coming in and out of the mall or traffic. And I, I fell victim to it myself. I'm like, there is no stop sign folks. There's no stop sign. Why are you stopping? <laughs> Keep going. And I'm like, what, why am I getting so angry? They probably don't realize everybody else has stopped. Right. <laughs> and it's, it's that emotional stress that you're under that you're getting mad at somebody for something mm -hmm. that it is beyond their control or they're being extra cautious because they're also knowing that sometimes there's craziness going on out there. And, mm -hmm. and I think that all this underlying factors 
can can be because of our beliefs, right? Because our our how we grew up, um, our belief system, all that. How does that contribute to our emotional health in terms of burnout or stress? And and really, how does that also during the holiday season when everything seems to be elevated? Absolutely. Well, I think like with burnout, that's a very interesting one because of course, I mean, there are external factors that definitely contribute to it. And there's, I mean, a lot of like, let's just say like kind of lack of boundaries within certain kind of uh, work situations or whatever. And there's not always so much that we can do in terms of how the company is operating. On the other hand, there are things that are internal with us that we might've picked up over the years. Like what I see with my clients is some of the most common reasons that people fall, you know, into burnout is people pleasing, you know, not being able to say no, not being able to, um, you know, taking on more work than they can possibly do. And perfectionism is another huge one because a lot of times, of course, you know, we want to do a good job. We want to do the best that we can, but it can also lead to not asking for help that when we need it, you know, it can lead us to not ever feel like we're good enough when we're doing something and that it's, you know, always going to take a lot more effort. And so maybe we've edited a a document that needs to go online the 500th time because it's just not perfect. And then we get into some situation where, I don't know, um, it's late. And then we have to go through that extra stress when we kind of cause a part of it ourselves. And so it's, it's very important um, to be, know how to know how to manage your emotional health in terms of your beliefs as well, because it can also show up as like, I mean, with the situation I gave you earlier, what, if you're all frazzled, it's hard to show up confident at work, you know, if, if you had road rage and you come in and like, you know, let's say you have to give a presentation, you're probably not going to do as good of a job if you're all like frazzled and, you know, <laughs> activated, you know. And we're going to, we're definitely going to talk about those confidence blocks in the next segment, but I, it's important, right? And it's like you said, it's not, we can't always control everything, you know, much to my dismay, I can be a control freak, but <laughs> we can control how we react Mm -hmm. and taking that moment to breathe, to maybe practice some EFT tapping, to, to just relax and understand where is it coming from? And like you said, it goes back to our beliefs. And sometimes we need to set some time aside to look at that Mm -hmm. so that we know, Oh, where is that coming from? So that when we are triggered, um, we know how to react and how to, to move forward. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That, I mean, that I think that that can be, especially during the holidays, because the holidays bring up so many um, feelings, right? They, they have memories. We have, you know, maybe missing somebody because they're no longer here, either mm-hmm. um, because they've passed away or they're, you know, in another state, or we have childhood traumas or, those sort of things that you need to take a moment to figure out where those are coming from. And as listeners, and I I know, you know, I talk about this a lot. And um, I think (laughs) even Jessica can, can uh, attest to this. It's those boundaries. What are we setting ladies and gentlemen? Are we setting those appropriate boundaries? Are we communicating those boundaries? Cause we cannot assume that everybody has the same boundaries because we don't. And Mm. that's how you said you get into that people pleasing mode because you're not setting those boundaries. You're not saying no, you're taking on too much. You you're carrying too much. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not even your luggage that you're carrying. You need to set down that baggage and and be able to, to move forward. And that is why that emotional health is so important to our success. Otherwise it weighs us down. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and with family dynamics, it's even more complicated because it can be harder to maintain our boundaries because especially, I mean, in the real world, a lot of people who care about us do respect our boundaries, you know, your friends and stuff like that. It's more likely that they will respect it. Whereas with family, sometimes there are those dynamics that have always been there and it's very hard to change them (laughs) sometimes. And so, especially when you're setting boundaries with people for the first time, it's not always the the smooth, easy road that you would expect. And so sometimes it is important to be able to be like, okay, this is not going the way I I want. How can I go and ground myself right now so that I can come back to the conversation, you know, in a, in a good way, because um, like you said, especially with people pleasing, a lot of times it shows up in families because it's always been there. 
you know, and like, we also, we want to be liked in our family. We want to be supported. And um, if we're not careful with our boundaries, we can really end up in situations where we're giving a bit too much and not filling up our own cup. And then we're getting resentful. And then that's also when a lot of little family <laughs> explosions happen, <laughs> you know, because we don't say anything, we get resentful and then blah, you know. Yeah. And it's not the other person's fault because you never communicated it. And, and they might've crossed a boundary, but if you never, if you've always, I always say, if somebody's coming in late to work all the time, and you have a policy at work about if you're late a certain amount of times, you're going to write them up and blah, 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 but you never enforce it. And then all of a mm-hmm. sudden you blow up and get mad at somebody because you are always late and I want to fire you because you're always late. Did you give them a notice? What, what, what did you mm-hmm. do? It's the same thing with families, because if you've always done this and you've always been this way and you are deciding to change, um, because you are realizing it's sucking the life out of you. Hmm. You have to take that time because you've never established that boundary. It's going to take time for those family members to understand that. Um, And it's not that they're meaning to disrespect you, but you, you also have a responsibility in in what you created. And so Mm -hmm. understanding that it might not be accepted all right away, And also communicating that, hey, over the years, I know I have always said yes, and I have always done it, but it sucked the life out of me. And I need you to respect that. You have to have that conversation. Um, And that, that can, that can go a long way because then people understand. And if they don't, well, then that's, that's on them. But then you've now communicated what, what and why. Exactly. And it can be difficult, you know, I mean, I know that, like, I've had to learn this quite late in life (laughs) with my, with my family. And sometimes it does take practice. And it's also good to give yourself grace when you don't do it perfectly every time, or when you do lose your temper, and then you're like, okay, let's think about that. What was my role here in this situation? Let's be honest with myself, because sometimes we also need to give ourselves some grace. And that's also important with the tapping to be able to be like, okay, yes, I lost my temper. Yes, yep. I I did not mean that. I should not have said that. But like, you know, I can take ownership of it. I can apologize or whatever and get myself. I can recalibrate and I can come back and try it again. Yes. It's not the end of the world. It's not all or nothing. You know, nobody's perfect. Yep. And I think that's where let's take a quick break on that note. And when we come back, we're going to discuss how we can gain more confidence when we're trying to roll, roll through this. But Andrea, before we go, you have a free gift for listeners. Tell them how they can get it. I do. Um, so I have a link that basically it's a EFT book. If you're a beginner or even if you know something about EFT, it's a really good starter. It's only about 30 pages. So you can read it, you know, in the morning with your coffee. And it teaches you a little bit about how it works and some of the science behind it, because it's also used in clinical settings and, you know, um, has different uh, trials and everything. So it's a good place to start if you want to learn how to use it on yourself as well. Thank you so much, Andrea. I am Erica Gifford-Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Don't forget to visit GetRootedRadio.com to listen to a replay of this episode, sign up for helpful tips, and learn about upcoming events. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Andrea Hunt. Andrea, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. So during the last two segments, in case you've missed it, we've been discussing EFT tapping, what it is, and our emotional health. Now let's get into how we can gain more confidence. So how can EFT help with those those confidence blocks? So it's really helpful, especially in areas um, of like limiting beliefs and negative self-talk, because whether or not we like it, if we're not conscious about it, there are things that we sometimes say to ourselves that are not very nice and they're not very encouragement, encouraging. And it's probably, you know, things that we would never say to another person, hopefully, you know, because think about it. If like you had a friend who wanted to go and apply for a job, would you tell them that they're not good enough? They're not smart enough. They're probably not going to get it. And they'll probably, you know, mess it up or something like that. And that sounds really harsh when you hear it out loud. And yet those are the kind of things sometimes that we say to ourselves. And so the way that EFT tapping can help with that negative self-talk is 
when we articulate it through the negative round, we kind of, we give it our voice to those feelings because often we tend to, you know, say things that are about our, are about ourselves that are mean and also even beat ourselves up, you know, when we make mistakes. And by articulating that, sometimes it's really powerful to watch people's faces as they realize some of the things that they've been saying about themselves. themselves. It's just not very nice. It's not very supportive. And it's definitely not compassionate. And it's definitely not loving. I mean, and they would never tell a child that hopefully they would never tell their friends or family members, you know, so why should we talk that way to ourselves? And so through the negative round, it's really good to get those things out because it lessens the emotional charge of those situations so that when we can put um, more positive beliefs on top of that, then it helps us to show up in more confident ways. And this is also the same with, you know, limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome, you know, all of the things that go along with like, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. Um, I'm going to mess it up. It's never going to be enough. You know, they're probably not going to like it. They're probably not going to like me. And even though a lot of those, you know, might carry those things around, sometimes we tell ourselves that it's fine. You know, we're like, no, that's fine. I, I don't think that about like, I, I know I got this, but internally, that's not how we really feel. Our brain is like, you liar. You're not confident. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. who do you think you are? Like, um, you know, and so it's really powerful to be able to clear those. And it's kind of interesting because it's something that like, I honestly, if I hadn't have done it myself again, I would not have under understood how it worked, but it's so far powerful to be able to look at those beliefs. Like I'm not good enough, or I have to stay safe by staying inside my box, you know, my, like my little box or whatever or it's not safe to risk, it's not safe to be seen. And once you can do a negative tapping round on that, to let the person feel a difference and okay, say it again. Now, how true does that feel? Because once you can lower the emotional charge of that belief, then we can put something on top like, I'm open to the idea that I'm more confident. Maybe I could handle this. What if it actually went really well? What if I didn't mess it up? <laughs> and, wow. and those kind of things. And, and it happens to all of us, right? And, and so I'll, I'll have a confession right now. I'm in, I'm in confessional. Um, I have had those negative self-beliefs, right? Negative self-talk. And, and, and I've had a, a lot this year with going through um, this journey through breast cancer and it's, it, it, they snuck up on me. I was mm -hmm. in the process. I've been a co-author and uh, five or six different books. And I'm in the process of writing my own while I was just about done. And I was doing my final chapter of wrapping it all up and this all hit. And so I had, oh my gosh, nobody's going to want to read my, my book. Nobody's going to mm -hmm. like, th now this is all on me. This is, I, it's not just a chapter or part of a book. It's the whole thing. And, and now I'm afraid to finish it because people aren't going to like it. They're going to they're going to be, oh, you're a fake, you're a phony. How do you know this? And you start having that. And it's it's funny because you would never tell your best friend that. You would never tell your siblings or your loved ones or a client that. And you have all these tools that you teach. And you're sitting here having this pity party. And what are you doing, Erica? Let's Let's move forward. But it it happens, even though I know what to do, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's, it happens, even though you know. So if you don't practice the techniques on a regular basis, mm -hmm. or pull those tools out of your toolbox when you need them, you can't release those blocks. And mm -hmm. just because you've released blocks before doesn't mean that they're not going to come back. And I think that's the important thing to do it because then sometimes people assume that doesn't work, right? Well, mm -hmm. now I've got another block. It's going to happen. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to have those struggles and we need to get over it, <laughs> get over ourselves and, and use what we have to be able to move forward. And it's going to take time. And that's when, mm -hmm. as you said in the last segment, we have to be patient with ourselves. We have to allow ourselves that grace to move forward. Absolutely. So, 
I mean, and the other thing is like confidence is kind of like a muscle, you know, it's like we don't go to the gym one time and like, you know, lift up some some weights to be like, okay, am I done? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so the way that I like to think of it is, it's like, you know, when you can do EFT on whatever fear it is, and then you can move yourself forward with small bits of evidence, you're proving to yourself bit by bit over time that you can do it. I mean, and I can tell you with myself, I mean, there's been so many times that like I've been knocked down and had to build up my confidence again. And it really is about, you know, making those small bits of evidence. So you're like, look, I could handle that. I'm proud of myself. Like that is really good. And instead of going for the automatic, you know, oh, you probably didn't do that well or whatever. And I think like, that's why it's so helpful. Well, That's why I like working with people with confidence because I have had so many struggles over the years off and on in certain areas that I really like being able to let people feel empowered. Yes. And I think that's a great analogy that you used. Confidence is a muscle. If you don't continue to work it out, it's, it's, it's going to (laughs) get flabby. (laughs) <laughs> and if it's yes. flabby, then you're not you're not going to want to do it because then you'll be more fearful and afraid of yep. of the consequences, you know. Because then yeah. we we build up these stories, of course, of that you know, and catastrophize sometimes. Like, <laughs> yes. well, what are some of the common issues that your clients have that you've worked with to get over some of those confidence the confidence blocks? Well, so I think a lot of people, especially I work with a lot of business owners, the fear of being seen, being rejected, being criticized is is a huge one, I would say, especially with a lot of the female entrepreneurs that I have when it comes to social media, because they might be like really great at their job and have, you know, a product or a service that they offer, but it can feel really scary to put themselves out there because they're like, yeah. okay, I'm going to be on social media. Like, what if somebody makes a mean comment? Like, what if somebody, you know, thinks I'm stupid or, you know, makes fun of me or something like that. And it can be really hard to get past that first step. And so a lot of times that can lead to self-sabotage, like procrastination. Like I had one client who, you know, worked on her website for like an entire year. So she did all of the work, but she like couldn't launch it. (laughs) She, because it was like the scary you know, monster on the, on the other side of like, what is going to happen when I actually do it? So she would kind of get busy doing other things and not publishing her website, even though we would talk about it. And through the whole, you know, EFT process, there's this one, what I call a what if round. That's one of my favorite things is you let the person just what if every possible scenario that could possibly go wrong and just, oh my God, what if they make fun of me, blah, 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 blah. Let it get the, let them get it out of their system so that then they can go to a positive what if round. Like, okay, what if, what if people actually like my service? And like, okay, what if somebody says something not nice, but is that really about me? Or does it mean that maybe they're a not a very nice person and they have their own stuff and I don't need to take that on and take it personally. Um, so like, I would say things like that. Also, of course, you know, um, issues with, you know, confidence blocks, like putting themselves outside of their comfort zone, because a lot of times we know we're safe in our comfort zone, but we're not growing there. And a lot of times, the longer we sit there, we're not really happy and fulfilled. And so having, being able to take steps to, you know, publish that book or, you know, launch that website or do a passion project, even though everyone else thinks it's a stupid idea. Like those kind of things are really quite common because unfortunately not everybody thinks that what we want to do is a good job, like is a good idea. <laughs> and we have to be able to be like, okay, if this is really about me, then I, I do want to to go forward with this. And I'm going to tap on the fears, tap on my resistance, whatever is keeping me stuck so that I can move forward. And then, sorry, the last thing really quick is just people who need to rebuild, you know, like rebuild after a job loss, rebuild after divorce. There's so many things in life that can really knock us down and we have to kind of start building ourselves up again. Yes. And it's, again, as we said, it's that muscle. We have to work it so that it's it's going to get weak at times and we just have to make it stronger. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss how we move forward with challenges in life and maybe even do a sampling of EFT tapping. This is Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. (music) 
Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any of the information during the last segments, go to GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com to listen to the replay. And don't forget to subscribe, sign up for tips and special events, and pricing for upcoming coaching sessions at GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Andrea Hunt. Andrea, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. So tell listeners how they can learn more about you, your services, and reach out to you if they want more information. So the best way would be my 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 uh, social media. So like my social media uh, on Instagram is Living Deliberately Today. And pretty much if you search anything Living, Living Deliberately Today, Andrea Hutt, I will come up on YouTube, TikTok. I have a lot of little videos and informational bits that I have on EFT, especially on how you can use it in many different situations, whether it's like, you know, dealing with um, family members and, you know, getting getting upset, needing to calm yourself down or ways that it can be helpful um, when you're preparing for your day or maybe rebuilding from different situations like breakups. I have a whole lot of things on like break up and I have another little series that I'm coming up with in the future because I used it for one of mine and I found it extremely helpful. So great information. So go check her out. So during our last segments, we talked about EFT tapping, emotional health and unblocking confidence. Now the big question, and we've touched on it a little bit, but I'd like to to take a little bit more time during this segment to, to talk about how can coaching and EFT be helpful When you're going through serious challenges, like you said, a breakup, a job loss, you're moving across the world as you did, like, how can all this help? So, yeah, like, I mean, it's a, it's a really good question because there are times in our life when suddenly, you know, it feels like the rug gets pulled out from under under us, you know, especially the last few years with, I mean, with COVID and especially here in Europe, we had so many lockdowns, it was just been very unpredictable and there's a lot of uncertainty and fear with people and it can be really hard to know like okay so what now what do I do if like you know you go through a divorce or you um, go through a job loss and some of those things are tied to our identity and so then when we don't have them anymore we're like okay so what is my life supposed to look like and that can be really confusing and it's definitely happened to me a few times and so what I like to do is kind of look at you know our the different areas of our life and be like all right what is currently working for me and what is currently out of balance? Because a lot of times we'll find out pretty quickly um, that we have certain areas that need more attention. Like maybe our job is going great, but we're working way too much and we're not taking care of our health. And, you know, we're, you know, not sleeping, not, not eating right, whatever. Or maybe, you know, we are, we don't have a social life because we're working so much. So it's important to look at that and figure out, what is working, what's not working, and what are the intentions moving forward that need to be targeted? And then to look at from an honest perspective, okay, what's been keeping us from maybe doing those things? And that's where we find out which limiting beliefs they're kind of showing up at that point, because they'll be like, I can't do that because usually we have a lot of, (laughs) we have a lot of reasons. Some maybe are valid, you know, Like maybe I'm not going to be a basketball player if I'm five feet tall, you know, like, and then there's other ones that it might be more on the excuse side. And so it's important to find those. And then because when we identify our fears and our limiting beliefs, whether we experience something that caused us to have them, or maybe we were told something as kids, maybe we watched somebody, something happened to some, something happened to somebody else, excuse me, or, you know, maybe our parents told us something. It's important to identify those things so that we can clear them and then you can move forward. And then you can gauge your progress, like I said, bits of evidence, piece by piece, so that you can rebuild. And I think that is, that's an important thing that you, that you called out. It's not necessarily going to happen overnight and it's building, right? It's those building blocks. And that's, I always say that's, that's why when we, people were kids, you got those building blocks because it it taught you how one Mm -hmm. step on top of another can, can build something great. And when, when we remember that, um, I, I tend to be sometimes an all or nothing person if in, and, um, the procrastination I'm good at that on, well, I can't get it all done right now. So I'm just not going to do it as opposed to, Mm. well, I could do one piece and then maybe in the afternoon, do another piece or, 
doing, I don't have time to go for an hour. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't work out for 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's setting that you'll, you'll find the time to do things. They're the things that you really want to do. Right. And I think when we are afraid, we don't have that confidence or we, our emotional health is out of whack because a breakup, a stress at the job, we don't have that balance in our life. And, and it's not just work-life balance or work-life alignment. It's also personal, right? Mm. Maybe you've got um, conflicting, you know, you've got this friend who's trying to pull you here and this friend who's trying to pull you here. You got your significant other over here. You got your kids over here and you're being pulled in all these directions. If you don't have that balance, and you don't have time to reset yourself, you don't have a good morning ritual and you don't have your habits in order, that all adds up and that can yeah. cause that stress. And I think EFT is something that can help with that. Mm -hmm. And I guess I, I would love to be able to, to tell listeners or show listeners too. So if you're just listening to this, you can go out to YouTube, you can see the video as well. So don't forget that listeners. But what is something that they can do? And I know the whole EFT process isn't just a two minute, <laughs> two minute <Yeah. laughs> process, but, but what are some, something that they could do? And then of course, take it, take it out a little bit further, you know, not just do it for 30 seconds and think it's going to work magic, but what's, what are some examples that they, that folks can do to help them? So the easiest one, um, I would say, just like if they're super overwhelmed and let's say even they're, you know, sitting on a bus or like in traffic or whatever, if you use your your hand to tap on your collarbone and then you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, three seconds. This is a good way to quickly ground yourself. If you just do that 10 times, you'll just immediately feel yourself like after about 10 the 10 times or whatever, or sometimes even less, just that you're kind of grounding yourself. And also it's, you're, you're fixated on tapping and doing something. So you're kind of distracting yourself as well, but also the breath is what's calming you down. And then so the other again, one that's tapping, tapping your chest or tapping on your, by your collarbone, breathing in through your nose and then exhaling for three seconds and doing that a, a repeat of 10 times all while you're continuing to tap. Exactly. Just very simple. Like you don't have to learn anything. Um, yeah. And then regular round, like I'll just tell you really quick, obviously a regular, like a round with, um, with me, for example, would be around an hour and we'd really kind of go deep into the emotions, but you use the side of your hand and that's called the karate chop point. And you would do, this is like the most, the simplest EFT technique. Okay. So <laughs> it's uh you would say a setup statement, acknowledging how you're feeling. So you'd be like, even though I am so stressed, and then you would say, I deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And then you'd repeat it twice. And then you're going to go through the negative round where you give a voice to the negative emotions that you're feeling. And again, it's not, it sounds kind of counterintuitive because we don't want to like, you know, exacerbate it, but it's important to acknowledge how we feel so we can let it go. So then you would just, you know, go between the eyes lightly with your two fingertips be like, I'm so stressed. Inside of your eye, I am so stressed. And you can add in some other sentences like, I don't know what to do. Below the eye. Below the nose. This is too much. Below the chin. I am so stressed. And then on the chest again, I'm overwhelmed. And so you would go through the negative process of just articulating every single thing that you feel, just keep going. And if you feel better with just words, you could just say like, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. You can make it as complicated as you want. And then you would do a positive round after the negative round is, is finished. Like I allow myself to be calm. I allow myself to be grounded. And that's just the simplest process if you want to kind of try it out. But there's yeah. lots of videos. I have some on my channel to really kind of target whatever you're feeling stress-wise. And I think it's important for folks to know that it's much like meditation. You can start small and then you can increase your practice, right? And I and it's 
you need to give it time. You need to allow for yourself to believe it's going to work and also do it, practice it. Mm. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I want one more time, just tell folks how they can reach you, how they can learn some more about your videos that you have out there and just more about your practice and, and, and your services. Sure. Well, they can follow me at um, Andrea Hunt Living Deliberately Today on YouTube and also Instagram and my Facebook. I always have, you know, um, upcoming workshops and things like that. I'll have my next one in January on the 9th. Um, and so that it's a good way, like if you're kind of wondering about your limiting beliefs, negative self-talk, how do you start even dealing with this? I've got a good like crash course dive. It's about three hours long and you can sign up for that. That's a great way to get to know me and how we can work together. And you can see if you um, are able to do EFT for yourself and if it has any benefits for you. And of course, I, I'm on social media a lot. So you can follow me there because I always have lots of things going on. Awesome. So that workshop is January 9th. Go and check it out and sign up for it. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. And thank you for all this information, because I think it's really great going into the holiday season. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to Get Rooted Radio. If you missed any part of today's episode or want to listen again, go to GetRootedRadio.com for the podcast and for the YouTube. And don't forget to tune in the first and third Monday of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, and 2 p.m. Pacific right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Before I sign off, ask yourself if you're living a rooted life. And if the answer is no, set up your free Empower Hour call with me. No charge, no obligations. Go to GetRootedRadio.com to find out how I can help you take action now. Thank you for tuning in. Have an amazing day. And I look forward to the next time on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, and letting it go. Visit GetRootedRadio.com if you haven't missed any part of this hit show. And tune in on TransformationTalkRadio.com to live fearlessly in your more and powerfully rooted in your unlimited yes. For more information and to work with Erica directly, visit GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com and get ready to live it up, love it up, and let it go.